So our next discussion will be on section view drawings. If you take a look at unit six in your course pack, you'll see that is the first part of this unit. Section views are a specialty kind of view that's occasionally needed while working on technical drawings. Make sure that you've got the guided notes downloaded for the lecture so you're able to follow along and get all the high points. So without further ado, section view drawings. Fact of the matter is that everything you've learned up to this point <coughs> about representing objects in engineering format has been accurate, uh, but at times the format is confusing. For example, take a look at the front view of this disk-like object here. Take a look at its side view, and I think you'll agree there's a lot of stuff going on over here. There's an awful lot of hidden lines, and while hidden lines are supposed to clarify things, in this case they confuse things. The drawing is much harder to understand than it should be. So a standard view in multi-view drawing with visible lines, hidden lines, center marks and center lines, these hidden lines are just a mess. So we're going to consider a different kind of view that shows the same information but much more clearly. And this is a section view. So for this object, if we were to slice it in half from the top quadrant through the bottom quadrant, right where that dark, heavy cutting plane line is indicated, and then we were to look in the direction of these arrowheads, well, we would see where the part was solid and where the part was hollow. And that's what a section view does. It shows you interior structure as well as the exterior shape on complex items. The basic idea is what would things look like if you took a saw blade and sawed through the object. Right? So here's our block of metal with a couple of counter bore holes. If we were to slice right down the center of those holes and then look at that view, what would we see? Well, we would see where it was solid metal. We'd see where it was hollow. The hollow areas are just outlined, but the solid areas have these thin section lines added. So what you get is an interior view, uh, and sometimes we find some surprising stuff in there, right? So the number one use of section views is to clarify the interior features. That would be hard to tell, hard to distinguish by looking at just hidden lines. The number one use of section views is to clarify things that might be confusing otherwise with hidden lines as far as interior features or interior structure goes. This is an example of a section view. Now, just think about it. We're cutting away at this pump, right? So we want to see what happens on the inside. Well, since the object is solid, that's kind of tough. Uh, but when we draw it in this fashion or represent it like this, well, all of a sudden it's easy to understand what's going on in there. This is done in architecture too. Architectural drawings often show the plan or looking down on the building. They show an elevation looking at the building. Uh, but then sometimes we want to slice through the building to see what is the interior structure. And that's what we have here. We can see interior details like this fireplace and this doorway. We can see the height of a person relative to the ceiling areas. We see structural beams. And we see where we cut through doors and windows. We can see floor framing members and the foundation and basement. See, that normally wouldn't be visible from just the outside. In this example, this is more of a commercial building, we can see floors and ceilings uh, with the dark, heavy, filled in areas. And then we can tell which areas have especially high ceiling, like over here, and which have the more standard height ceiling, like the rest of these places. <coughs> Here's another residential example, slicing through the building, showing structure, showing things like insulation in the ceiling, and then the roof, and then the floors, showing the basement area. Right? And it's as if we took a big saw and just sliced through the building and could look inside. 
This idea of creating sections is also used in other areas related to uh, civil engineering and geography and geology. Uh, this is a topo map. Maybe you've seen maps like this. We know that each of the contours represents a different elevation. Well, the idea is you can draw a line through a number of contours, and you can project those lines where the cut, where the cut crosses the contours, and get an idea, and accurate, and accurately represent what the Earth looks like where that cut takes place. <coughs> this is another use for section views. Section views are useful when you're dealing with a shape that's very difficult. Here's another use for section views. It's when you're dealing with shapes that are not simple, complex shapes. Now, for example, this beam is a very simple shape. It looks like the letter I. And if you cut it back a foot, or two feet, or four inches, or at five inches, it really wouldn't matter, would it? Wherever you cut it, it has that same profile, that same eye shape. Well, not everything is like that. For example, look at our canoe here. If we were to slice through the canoe six inches back from the front point, it would have one profile. And if we went back a foot from there, a different profile. And a foot back, a different pr profile. So shapes that change radically along their length can be documented by using section views. How about your computer mouse? This is not like a brick. It's not like a bar of soap, right? It's a very complex shape. So how do you document for manufacturing that complex shape? Well, you slice it every half of an inch. And at each of the slices, you show me the contour. And then the solid shape is a mesh that binds all of those contours together. I've seen an example here with this Aerlion for, uh, for an airplane. The, uh, the fin is made of three different cross sections that are welded or melded together. This was in a technique used extensively in the automotive industry up until the time, well, fairly recently, when computers kind of got more heavily involved in body design on vehicles. Uh, what you see here is you see a bunch of pieces of foam glued together. And the idea is this is a full-size scale model of this vehicle. Uh, we mock it up using sheets of polystyrene, sections of polystyrene, two inches thick. And then at the end, we cover it over with some clay to give it that smooth finished appearance. And this is how automotive design was done for a very long time. Basically, we used all of these sections to show the shape of the body of the car. This happens a lot too in nautical architecture, naval architecture, where we have, for example, a boat or they're like this submarine. Uh, wherever I cut it open, the contours, the shape of the hull is a little bit different. Right? And every time I cut it, I'm cutting through something different. Maybe I'm cutting through uh, the drive. Maybe I'm cutting through the fuel storage, or a reactor, or cargo, right? So we see the shape of the exterior, but also what's inside it at that point. So best way to do this is to actually cut some stuff open. So let's switch into Iron Chef mode and do some cutting. <coughs> There is a device that's uh, used to make some nice section lines, equally spaced. It's called a section liner, and uh, these are antiques. They stopped making these oh, probably about 50, 60 years ago. You can find them online if you're a drafting nerd like I am and you like buying antique drawing tools. Uh, but I'll show you how mine works. The idea, though, is this will give you equally spaced section lines with minimal effort. Those section lines represent solid material and depending on the pattern they might represent different materials everything that we were talking about everything we did we use these 45 degrees 45 degree lines and you know for a general use that's fine uh, specifically though it can be used to represent a specific material
cast iron. Look at the pattern over here. Now this pattern is slightly different. It represents a different material. And we have the one here for the yellow metals, brass, bronze, copper. If you look at these, and if you've done some AutoCAD, do these look a little familiar? Yeah, NC31, right? NC32. Uh, these are hatch patterns. The idea is AutoCAD can draw these for you automatically, saving you tons of time compared to what we're going to do with the hand drawing. All right, but the different manufacturing materials all have their specific pattern. Uh, the white metals have cross hatching like this, and even architectural materials like concrete. Uh, this is a bunch of dots with little triangles to represent the uh, the mix, the sand, the slurry, and the aggregate within the concrete. <clears throat> so we're going to take a quick look here. I've got this part and we are cutting it open with a section. So I've got this part here and we are cutting it open. So I've got this part here and we are imagining what it would look like if it were to be cut open with a cutting plane line and we are looking to the left the way the arrows are pointing and I'm going to show you a few examples let's look to see what's right what's wrong we want to see the good the bad and the ugly so our first example uh, the first example is wrong can you tell why it's wrong see this guy is wrong because what it needs would be the lines connecting here to here and here to here and here to here All right so this was drawn it's the right idea when you cut through it you're seeing the solid material but what they didn't draw was the lines that connect everything together you see you really would see those lines those are edges that are visible so they need to be part of the drawing and that is why this one is wrong now this one is also wrong can you tell why? On this one, they did draw the connecting lines in between the solid parts. Right? The solid material has been connected from one side to the other with these lines. Can you see? <coughs> can you see though what is wrong with it? It's hidden lines. Somebody decided, hey, let's throw the hidden lines in too. And you know the whole point of making section view drawings is to avoid hidden lines. So uh, I won't say never, but 99.99% of the time, you're not going to see hidden lines on a section view drawing. You shouldn't see them. Here's our next one. Also wrong. Can you tell it's wrong? See, here somebody was thinking, well, I know what hidden lines are, and I know what sections are. And I guess maybe they're just trying to play it safe. They wanted to cover all their bases, so they drew something that looks like uh, they've replaced the visible lines, lines that should be solid and dark, with hidden lines. Of course, that's ridiculous. So that's why this one is wrong. Now this one's a little bit trickier. This one's trickier. Can you tell why this section view is incorrect? It's the section lining. See how it's going up to the right over here? And see how it's going up to the left over here? We don't do that unless these are two different parts. Right? We did change direction on section lining, but we only did that when we had a part and then another part next to it that was a distinct separate part. So by doing this, I mean, it looks very artistic and well balanced, right? That's got some symmetry, uh, but it's incorrect from a technical standpoint. If it's one piece of cast metal or forged metal, then the section line should go through the whole thing at the same angle. So here it is. Here is the correct one. Here is the one that is done perfect. Uh, we don't see any hidden lines. The edges are all visible in dark lines. Section lines are dark and thin. They're all at the same angle. And of course, if something is cylindrical, like a hole, well, then it gets a center line through it, just like we have a center mark over here and center marks around the bolt circle here. OK, 
Okay, so just review that real quick in your course pack, why this one is correct and why these all are not correct. So section view is a specialty view. We don't always need to include them in the drawing, but sometimes they can be super helpful when we're dealing with complex parts that have difficult to visualize internal geometry. Uh, and then what we did is we worked with three basic types of section views. If we take a look in the course pack, you'll see a lot of the examples that are in the PowerPoint have been included, explanations on why we do section viewing, what the different materials represent, how sections can be used to define very complex shapes. And then we have mechanical examples of the three sections that we need to be aware of and be able to work with. We have the full section for our first example, uh, the part here, front view, top view, isometric. <coughs> a cutting plane line has been added to the top view, and the front view has been drawn as a full section. Right? And why do we call it a full section? Well, it's been fully cut through, and the entire view that's been sectioned is in section. There's a little hole in the back here. You can see the tunnel for the hole up here. We're viewing it in that direction. So that is why we see the hole back here. There's a edge right here. There are edges over here that define the edges of the hole. Because if you pick this piece of material up, you could run your fingers over that and feel it. The half section was the second kind of section we did and half sections have a lot of uses on symmetrical parts that have some cylindricity so this part here has a center axis if I were to draw it as a full section whatever I drew up here I would just draw mirror image down here there's nothing wrong with that but in this case what I'm able to do is I'm able to show half of the view in section. The other half just sh shows what's on the outside. So I get an exterior regular normal right side view. And what you're doing is you're getting a twofer, right? You're getting more bang for your buck. You're making one drawing and getting to see two things instead of making two separate drawings to show those two separate things. We see that the cutting plane goes into the part, stops at the center point, bends at 90 degrees, and then comes out and bends again into the original direction. The arrow says, look this way. And then over here, they drew a center line coming through here. You can actually draw a center line or a solid line. Either one works. Since this is the part being removed, we drew this part here in section. Since nothing happened down here and that's left behind, we draw this section here this part here, we draw this part down here, just what we see from the outside. No cutting, no sectioning has taken place on the bottom part here. Third kind of section we're looking at is this offset section. So an offset section is ideal when we're talking about making one drawing that shows multiple things that are not in a straight line. So there's a hole here, and a slot here, and a freaky counterboard hole here, and another simple hole here. Well, instead of making one, two, three different section view drawings, we can make one single section view drawing. The cutting plane offsets or bends through the different features. And then what we have here is a view that shows it passing through the first hole up through the slot, through the next counterbore hole, and then lastly through that simple hole. Again, the caution with these, I gave you the little picture here as a model to help you just understand 
realize that we are not really cutting this thing open, right? We are not really going to bust out a saw and saw through this. And I say that because this corner here doesn't create a line down here, or it shouldn't. This corner here shouldn't create a line over here. This corner here. It shouldn't create a line down there. Fact is, there's no cutting taking place, so there are no edges that show up in this section view. Here's our good, bad, and ugly description of that part and why some of these are correct and some are not.